Take your Bible this evening, if you would, for our scripture reading to Nehemiah chapter 8, please. Nehemiah chapter 8. <clears throat> We're going to read verses 8 through 12. Verses 8 through 12 of Nehemiah chapter 8. Reading them responsibly. Begin together on verse 8, and I'll read 9 together on 10. We'll alternate like that until we read. We end together on verse number 12. Nehemiah 8, beginning with verse number 8. You know, the pastor always likes to hear the pages of the Bible rustling when people are turning to the scripture. I just don't like to hear them rustle too long. <laughs> if you don't have it by now, I just stand up and look intelligently on whatever page you have, okay? Uh, let's stand together and we'll read the scripture tonight, all right? Nehemiah 8, let's begin together on verse number 8. Ready? So they read in the book, in the law of God distinctly, and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. <clears throat> and Nehemiah, which is the Tirshatha, and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord, neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Hold your peace, for the day is holy, neither be ye grieved." And all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions and to make great mirth because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. And let's pray together, shall we? Father, add your blessing, please, to the reading of the scripture here tonight. Thank you so much for the Bible. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your words and preserving it for us that we held copies in our hands tonight. And Lord, I pray that each of us would be prepared to receive the truth that you have for us tonight from your word. Lord, I would ask you that you'd use the special this evening to continue to make our hearts ready. That, Lord, we would be in tune with you. We'd have ears to hear what the Spirit would say to each of us this evening through your word. And we'll thank you for what you'll do. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Like a river glorious is God's perfect peace over all victorious in its bright increase. Perfect yet it floweth fuller every day. Perfect yet it grows of hurry touch the spirit there stayed upon Jehovah hearts are fully blessed finding as he promised perfect peace and rest every joy or trial falleth from above traced upon our dial by the son of love we may trust 
trust him fully all for us to do they who trust him holy find him holy true stayed upon jehovah hearts are fully blessed finding as he promised perfect peace and rest stayed upon jehovah hearts are fully blessed finding as he promised perfect peace and rest amen father in heaven we bow before you now as we come to the preaching of your word thank you lord for your goodness to us and thank you god for your desire to communicate to us through your word. And I pray, Lord, you'd help each one of us tonight to give our attention to your word this evening. Lord, don't let our minds wander to other things and uh, things that would capture our attention and capture our thoughts and cause us to miss what you have for us this evening. Take the, the, the simple and yet profound truth this evening and use it to, to help the people of God that are here this evening, those who might be watching by way of live stream. And I pray, Lord, it will be a help and encouragement and a blessing to the people of God tonight. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. In the book of Nehemiah, what you have is a group of Jews, a remnant, led by Zerubbabel and Nehemiah. They've left captivity to come back to Jerusalem uh, to rebuild the walls around Jerusalem. Uh, the, everything's been in ruins ever since the Babylonian invasion. And they're there to rebuild the walls. They, they plan, they organize, and they all go to work. Uh, when you read the first few chapters of Nehemiah, you find in chapter 2, Nehemiah surveys the thing, goes out at night and checks out the damage and sees what needs to be done. By the time you get to chapter 3, you, you, you see a phrase repeated, lists everybody who's working, and it's all about next unto them and next unto them, and next unto them, and over and over again it just lists how the people were side by side around that place getting the job done. The amazing thing is, in 52 days they finished the job. Uh, a monumental task, but the Bible says they stayed at it all the time. That they, they, they would barely take, they'd take the clothes off the washroom and put them back on and keep working. Uh, when they had battles, he said, you... You have a sword in one hand and a trial in the other hand. You keep building, and just in case you need to use a sword, you have the sword ready. Uh, but they just kept at it, and, and amazingly, they were done in 52 days. So, during that time, they found in the temple a copy of the Word of God. And Ezra stands up, one of the scribes, and reads the Word of God. We read about it tonight. They read in the book of the law of God distinctly. They gave the sense and caused the people to understand the reading. And so they understood what God expected for them. And, and the people, what they do is, they realize as they hear the word of God read to them how far they've strayed from God. They realize how far away from God they've gotten. And because they've heard what the God said, and they begin to mourn, and they begin to weep over their sin against God. It's interesting, boy, today preacher stands up and tells you God's word and how far you've strayed from God and everybody wants to throw the preacher out. Uh, uh, quite a different response. But here they wept and they mourned and, 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 and that made Nehemiah and Ezra grieved at their heart and he tries to encourage them and he said, hey, folks, don't mourn and weep. Today's a happy day. Uh, today's a holy day. Uh, you finished the wall. You've done what God wanted you to do. Uh, this is a day of gladness. This is a day of joy. And he tries to encourage them. He said, eat and drink and share with other people who don't have anything and make it a time of great joy and gladness. The walls have been completed. And then he makes a statement at the end of verse 10. He said, don't be sorry. The day's holy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, I want you to think about that statement. We sing that song every February. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 
the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm going to do a solo one these times. But, uh, and we, we sing that song. And, and we, we, now what does that mean? What is that talking about? Somebody says, well, it means the Lord will strengthen you. Well, it does mean that. And the Lord certainly does strengthen us. But that's not what that's talking about. Well, what does the joy of the Lord is your strength? Does it mean? Does it mean that my rejoicing in the Lord will strengthen me? Well, rejoicing in the Lord will strengthen you, but that's not what that's talking about. I think the Bible does say in Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. That's a good thing to do. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, but that's not what that verse is saying. Does it mean that me rejoicing over my salvation will strengthen me? Well, I think if you rejoice over your salvation, it will help you. And it will strengthen you. And it's good to thank God for your salvation. But that's not what that's talking about. That's not what that's referring to. I think we ought to rejoice that we're saved. And I think a Christian ought to have joy. Uh, Billy Sunday said, if you don't have joy, there's a leak in your Christianity somewhere. And I agree with that. I don't think you have to look like you fell out of the back end of the hearse to be a Christian. Uh, I don't think that's a, that's a prerequisite at all, okay? I think you ought to be happy. I think you ought to be joyful. In fact, and it's interesting, as I was uh, studying for this message, you know, most of the things that you find and most of the things people talk about are the joy of the believer, the joy of the Christian, and, and my joy and this joy. And, 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 but listen, notice carefully what that says. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Whose joy is it? It's the Lord's joy. It's God's joy, not my joy. It's the Lord's joy. Joy, listen, joy is a passion or emotion excited by the acquisition of the ex or expectation of good. That's what joy is. Joy is that excitement you feel when something good has happened to you. That's, that's, that's joy. The, the excitement when your team wins the ball game. The excitement when, when, when you find a great deal at the store and it's 50% off and you've got Kohl's cash for some more money off, you know. I'm talking your language, ladies, okay? And, 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 and that's just joy. And it's okay. It's that expectation, that feeling we get uh, when the, we're, we're, we're successful or uh, a desire we had is satisfied. That's the, that's the passion and the joy, the emotion that we feel. And here he says it's the joy of the Lord that will be your strength. In other words, what it, whatever brings joy to God strengthens me. Whatever brings joy to God strengthens me. You recall Matthew 25, the parable of the talents. Remember the one who got two and made it four, the one who got five and made it into ten? He gave both of them the same combination. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. The only, the only time the joy of the Lord is mentioned is right here in Nehemiah 8.10. That's the only time in the Bible that phrase is used. Joy of thy Lord is mentioned here in Matthew uh, about the faithful servants. As they served God, as they faithfully did what God wanted them to do, they got to enter into the joy of thy Lord. It brought great joy to God when they did what God asked them to do. He told them to multiply their talent. So the people mourn and they weep when they learn to their disobedience to God. But when, and by the way, when you and I obey the Bible, when we obey God's word, when we follow his commandments, living as the Bible says we ought to live, you know what that does? That brings joy to the heart of God. That's why He created us. See? That's why He made us. In, in 3 John there when He said, I have no greater joy than to hear what? That my children walk in truth. Now if, if He can say that I have no greater joy than to hear my children walk in truth, how much more can that be said of God and us? No greater joy can you and I bring to the heart of God than when we walk the way He tells us to walk. Then we live the way He tells us to live. So the joy of the Lord is my strength. So in other words, when I know I brought the Lord joy, that strengthens me. That gives me strength. A lady 
may go through nine months of carrying a child, months of you feel like everybody's staring at you, <laughs> feeling very large. But one night, the contractions start. The pain intensifies. They become harder and more frequent. Finally, you wake your husband up and say it's time. You go through possibly for hours. The pain is pretty intense. You're not sure you can take anymore. And you think in your mind, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> Ladies. Hmm? And then the doctor says, push. You don't know where you get the strength to do that, but you get the strength to do that. And then you hear a cry, and they lay that little girl or boy on your chest. You know what happens? The joy that fills your heart. Hmm? You realize where the strength came from because of the joy you were going to experience when you laid that child upon your breast. It's the joy of the little one that gives you strength. I can illustrate it by, by little ones. Um, Alana is two. She's our granddaughter. And she's at that age where if she'll pick something up and bring it over to you, and you say, well, thank you, thank you very much, that's wonderful. Guess what? Huh? She's going to get more, okay? <laughs> she's over picking something else up and bringing it over to you. Well, thank you very much, boom, she's off to get it again. Why? She found out that what pleases Papa huh, gives her strength. And she'll do that just as long as I praise her and let her know I'm really happy about that. You see? Hey. It's, it's, it's what brings the Lord pleasure, what brings the Lord joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength, not my joy, but His joy. It isn't, it isn't something, I'm just not happy. You know what? It's not about your happiness or my happiness. It is about His happiness. It is about His joy. I can, you and I, think about this, you and I can bring joy to God. You and I can bring joy to his heart. Do you need to take her out, Dan? Go ahead. Go ahead. Take her out. I want you to go ahead. You need to go, Karen? Go ahead. We'll help you out. You going to stay or go? What are you going to do? Because if you're moving and talking, we're not getting anywhere. All right? What are we going to do? Want to make a call, Dan? It's fine with me either way. Just, just. Okay, you need, you need help with anything? Okay, yeah, Brother Bob's coming. Brother Brett will help if you need him. We'll get them squared away. You all right? There you go. Is that her walker behind you? Her cane's over here. Give her whatever she usually takes. Don't leave it. There we go. squared away let's pray for her right now okay father I bow before you and I'm praying for Karen this evening Lord I pray you'll touch her and Lord I pray that what she's dealing with right now you'll cause it to pass uh, give Dan great wisdom uh, as he deals with her the right things to say the right things to do Lord watch over her and please take care of her this evening and we'll thank you for it we pray in Christ's name amen amen pray for her all right? Now, we're, you know, here's, here's, here's something I want you to focus on, okay? So often, all we focus on is whether I have joy or whether I'm happy, whether I'm, I'm, I have pleasure. 
Let me look at some look at some verses with me. Will you get your Bible out? Look at some verses with me. Look at Psalm 149. The 149th Psalm. Aren't you glad you have a Bible? 149th Psalm. Look at, look at Psalm 149 and verse number 4. Notice the Bible says, For the Lord taketh pleasure in His people. Who does God take pleasure in? Huh? Yeah, who's His people? Yeah, that's us. God takes pleasure in you and me. He gets pleasure from us. I wonder when's the last time you gave God pleasure? It was the last time you pleased God. Look at Hebrews chapter 13. Would you look there please? Hebrews chapter 13. The last chapter of the book of Hebrews. Hebrews 13. Notice with me verse number 15. Hebrews 13 verse 15. If you're there you say amen. Okay. By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to His name, but to do good and to communicate forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is what? Well pleased. God is well pleased. So we find out we can please God. Think about 2 Corinthians 9, 7 where it says, But every man, talking about giving, has he purpose it in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God, what? Loveth a cheerful giver. Now, it doesn't mean that he, he won't accept it from a grouch, but, but it means he loves it when we cheerfully give to him. He takes pleasure in his people. He takes pleasure when we offer the sacrifice of praise to him continually. We can bring pleasure to God. Look at Revelation, the last book of the Bible, Revelation 4. And look with me at verse number 11. Revelation 4 and verse number 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things. And for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Who created all things? God. Are you and I part of all things? Yes. Why were all things created? For His pleasure. Why were you created? For His pleasure. To bring pleasure to God. To, to be pleasing to Him. To bring joy to Him. That's why you and I are here. So God can be pleased. And by the way, if God can be pleased, God can also not be pleased. Okay? It goes both ways. So there's things we do to please God. There's things we do that won't be pleasing to God. You have to understand that. Now, the Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 6, without faith it's impossible to please Him. You have to please Him by faith. He that cometh to God must believe that He is and He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Faith is critical. Why is faith critical? Because faith is where we believe God. Faith is where we, put our, we, we show our trust in God. It reflects our attitude toward God. Is God trustworthy enough that I'll obey His Word? See, is God... That's faith. Then why would I live the way the Bible says? Because I have faith in God that this is true. That this is what God says and that God will bless my life if I live the way I, He tells me to live and I'll bring pleasure to Him. I'll bring glory to Him. I bring honor to Him. So oftentimes, before you're saved, what, who wants the glory? We do. We want the glory. Listen to the basketball players this time of year, you know. They talk about how great they are, you know, and how, how good they are, how, how wonderful they can do. It's, it's amazing. Listen, it, it's, for the Christian, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's always about Him and giving Him the glory and giving Him the honor and putting God in the spotlight. God is to be pleased and we're here to please Him. If He's happy, if He has joy... That's good enough for me. And that strengthens me. If he's pleased, that strengthens me. Do you understand? Do, do you get it? Do you see what he's saying? My strength to do right comes from the joy of the Lord. My strength to read the Bible comes from the joy of the Lord. 
My strength to pray and talk to God comes from the joy of the Lord. My strength to be different from the world comes from the joy of the Lord. My, my strength to witness comes from the joy of the Lord. My strength to be faithful comes from the joy of the Lord. My strength to, to do as I ought to do, to live as I ought to live, uh, realizing that it brings joy to the heart of God, strengthens me. Listen, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ. By the way, the Bible says, which strengthens me, strengtheneth me. We, a lot of the modern versions change that to who strengthens me. Now, let me ask you a question. Does Christ strengthen us? Sure he does. But that's not what that verse was saying. I can do all things through Christ. That, the fact that I can do all things through Christ strengthens me. You see, that's what strengthens me. And I can do all things through Christ. And listen, that's because he's pleased. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. That strengthens me when I know that I'm bringing joy to the heart of God. When, you know, it's a joy to the Lord to hear you pray. It's his delight to hear you pray, talk to him. It's a joy to the heart of God to see you faithfully read his word. It's a joy to the heart of God to see you faithful to the house of God. It's a joy to the heart of God when you tell someone else about His Son and tell them you're trying to tell someone else, introduce someone else to His Son whom He so loved the world that He gave His Son for. It's a great joy when we carry the message. Get your focus off yourself. Get your focus off me, 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 I, I, I. And get your focus on God. It's a wonderful thing when God's people who eat God's food and breathe God's air and walk on God's earth decide it's no longer all about me and what is God doing for me, but I want to bring joy to the heart of God. I want to bring pleasure to Him. I want to live for His honor and for His glory. It would be a delight to bring Him joy. I don't know about you, but I'd like to bring joy to the heart of God. I'd like to bring joy to him. Wouldn't it be wonderful when you see Jesus if you could hear him say, You were a source of joy to me. You were a source of joy to me. I thought about I thought about Noah, who we talked about this morning. What a joy Noah must have been to God. All the, the, the people and the imagination of their heart were only evil continually, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And Noah and his family, eight of them, got into the ark. That would be a great joy to the heart of God to know that somebody believed him and somebody trusted him. The joy of the Lord is your strength. May 30th, what's that, 12 days ago now? 13 days ago. Uh, 10 years ago, 2007, my dad went to heaven. And um, my dad, as, as we got older, we, we became very close to each other. We, we talked quite a bit. And uh, nearly every weekend we'd talk and uh, talk on the phone. And I, I was so happy that the last time we talked on the phone and always ended the conversation with I love you. And those are the last words I got to say to my dad. But I'm glad I got to say them. I'm glad we ended the conversation that way. I always, you know, you've heard me say this. There's a, when you're a small child growing up, I, I obeyed my dad and did what my dad wanted me to do. You know why? I didn't want a whipping. I didn't want to get the belt. Did your dad use the belt? Yeah, and I'm better for it too, by the way. He applied the board of education to the seat of learning, and I learned a lot, okay? And... And, 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 but you know, when, you, when, you, when I get into high school and I got to where I was big as he was, okay, I, 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 I wasn't so afraid of him giving me a spanking. I, I wasn't so afraid of the physical discipline. What I was afraid to see was him look at me and say, I'm very disappointed in you. Oh, man, that hurt worse than any kind of, but I'd rather him spank me. I'd rather him give me the belt. You know why? That's over in a few seconds. I can move on. 
But boy, when he say he disappointed me, you hurt me. That 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 was hard. You understand? You understand the the maturity that comes with that. And then, then when you're grown, you still look to please him. You still look to see your dad say, "Hey, I'm 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 proud of you, son." Are, are you're a great source of joy to me. My mom's 90. She'll be 91 in October. I want to be a source of joy to my mom. I want to I live to where she can say, that's my son. I, I don't ever want to say, that's my son. I don't, want, I don't want ever her to be ashamed that I'm her son. But listen to me. I don't want God to be ashamed. I don't want God to be ashamed to say, that's my son. You know, the Bible says we can so live that God's ashamed to be called their God. Read about that in 1 John. I don't want that. I want to be a source of joy to God, a source of joy to him. You know, God's just looking for some faithful people, people that love him, people that will live for him, people that will follow him, people that will pray, people that will be faithful to his word, People that will tell others about Christ. People will be separate from the world and separate themselves to God to live for Him with their life, to desire to please Him. People who just say, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to bring joy to the heart of God. I don't want to be a cause of grief to the heart of God. I want to bring joy to the heart of God. And when you decide that, and when you say, that's my goal, and God help me to do that every day to bring joy to your heart, you know what God does? He gives strength to your soul. He strengthens you to be able to do it. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. That's true of the heart of God as well. Wouldn't it be great if there was some people somewhere who said, I think our, my desire, our desire is that we bring joy to the heart of God. That we would live, not that I'd be happy, so that, but I just want to live so I know God's happy. That God has joy. That I'm a source of joy to our God. And you know what? If I know I bring joy to Him, that'll strengthen me to do what I ought to do, to be what I ought to be. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Let it be your strength tonight as well. All right, let's pray together, shall we? Father, take the truth now this evening, just a simple truth, but Lord, a helpful one. I pray, Lord, that our church family will never see that verse quite the same again. I pray, Lord, that there'd be folks here tonight who would say, you know what, I want to so live that I can bring joy to the heart of God. That I can be a delight to Him, that He can be pleased with His people. That I can live to bring pleasure to Him. Lord, I pray that we would so live for you, not because, well, God's going to get me. Lord, God's going to correct me. God's going to punish me. But I want to go beyond that, Lord, and say I want to please you. And I pray there'd be a group of people in this place who would say I want to so live my life that I would be pleasing to God, that I'd bring joy to his heart. And if, he brings, if I know I'm a source of joy to God, That'll strengthen me to do it every day of my life until I see him face to face. And he tells me that I can enter into the joy of thy Lord. Lord, we love you tonight. We want to be a source of joy to your heart. We want to walk in the truth. For that will bring you great joy. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Just a simple truth this evening. Yet it can be a life-changing one as well. To get your focus not on whether you're happy or whether you have joy, but whether does God have joy with your life. He saved you for a reason. He gave you eternal life for a purpose. The Bible says they that are in the flesh, 
those that are unsaved, those that are still walking after the flesh, they cannot please God. They can't bring joy to the heart of God. Oh, but once you're saved, once you know Christ is your Savior, you can bring joy to God. You can bring pleasure to God with your life. I wonder how many folks tonight would just say, Pastor, God has spoken to my heart. I want the joy of the Lord to be my strength. My focus is not going to be, am I happy, am I joyful, but am I bringing joy to God? My walking in the truth is my life a source of pleasure to God. Pastor, God has spoken to my heart tonight. I want the joy of the Lord to be my strength. Pray for me this evening. Will you slip your hand up, Christian? Yes. Amen. Amen. You may put them down. In a moment, I'm going to pray. When I'm done praying, we'll have our invitation. If you're here tonight and you don't know for sure if you died, you go to heaven. While Christians are coming to pray during the invitation, when I'm done praying, we'll stand to our feet. The pianist will play. Brother Bob's going to sing. People will begin to slip out. They'll come down here to the front to pray and talk to God about what he's spoken their heart about. If you're not sure if you died tonight and you go to heaven, why don't you slip out and come? Let someone take a Bible and show you how you can know for sure you're on your way to heaven. If you're here tonight and you're saved and <clears throat> you never made that decision public, why don't you come and just let me tell the people that you've received Christ as your Savior. Whatever it is that, whatever it is that God has dealt with your heart about, I want you to respond to him this evening and obey him. Listen to that still, small voice of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to hearts tonight. I pray, God, that each individual would do what you're bidding them do in their heart this evening. That your will would be done in every individual's life. Holy decisions could be made this evening that will affect our lives now and even for eternity. May your will be done now. May no one resist what you're speaking to their heart about. And I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she plays, Brother Bob's going to sing the invitation. God has spoken to your heart. Respond to him this evening. Will you please? That's right. Have thine own way. That's right. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yield it and still. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now. As in thy presence, humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Way. Fill with thy spirit till all shall see Christ only always living in me. Father, we thank you now for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to our hearts tonight, for meeting with us. Thank you, Lord, for one time in the Bible having Ezra say, the joy of the Lord is your strength. They did exactly what you had asked them to do, what you had laid on the heart of Nehemiah. And he was telling them, the joy you brought to the Lord, the joy that belongs to God, ought to strengthen you. And I pray, Lord, that as we live to bring joy to your heart, we'd be strengthened, knowing that we're fulfilling the purpose 
for which you created us, and that is to bring you pleasure. And I pray we would live every day with that in mind. Thank you for people who are sensitive to the Spirit of God. Thank you for decisions that were made for you this evening. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord today. Thank you for meeting with us. Pray your blessing on us now this week as we leave this place. Make us mindful that you go with us, Lord. We want to be mindful of your presence at all times. May others see Christ in us this week. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Let's sing it together, shall we? Here we go. Hey, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus anywhere and everywhere I go. For it's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below. It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. God bless you. You're dismissed.